Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessTrader.com uh, nightly uh, wrap-up show. If it's your first time here, thank you very much for uh, tuning in. Uh, all I ask is if you could take one second out of your time, uh, click a like, support the channel, uh, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Um, I'm going to cut this broadcast a little short tonight. Um, my, both of my kids have an incredibly hectic AAU schedule. Their practices are just all over the place, and they're just kicking my ass this season. So uh, let's talk about the market uh, in a very pure form and see exactly what we were trying to get out of it. So uh, Q's and pretty much everything else is still above the 50-day moving average. Um, really good consolidation, really good digestion. The last thing we wanted to see, well, depending who you ask, but the last thing you wanted to see from a macro point of view is kind of a gap and go every single day because the further it went from the 50-day moving average, the higher probability it was going to pull in. Instead, what's happening in is, is a very, very constructive digestion rest. Uh, usually digestion... You know, lasts about three, four, maybe five days. We're in like day three coming up. Um, the the one issue I have here is kind of where the the latter part of the earnings season is playing out. If you guys remember in the beginning, uh, you know, you had the positive reaction uh, with uh, Tesla and Snapchat and Microsoft and Google and Amazon, but then slowly but surely, the last three, four days, I don't know if you guys have really been paying attention. Um, I haven't been really paying attention to every single thing, but you kind of see there's a lot of sour notes uh, in the tech space. For example, you know, Shopify last night, or was it this morning? I can't remember. Uh, Shopify, I believe it was this morning. Uh, Shopify came out with crappy earnings, right? It, again, this is pointing to retail, considering how good Amazon is, uh, can, you know, how good their earnings were versus Shopify. I understand it's apples to oranges, but you can really see, uh, you know, not really a lot of love uh, in the space. You saw Uber uh, as well. Again, this is called lack of spending. When you see retail or consumer, direct or indirect to consumer, like Uber is literally, you know, B2B, you know, business to business, you, you give them your credit card, they, they, they charge it. Uh, it's not really a great sign. Again, I'm not really breaking any news here that the economy is not great considering uh, where inflation is. But they, again, this is something that uh, you do have to monitor for the rest of their earning season. Even a company like a firm, right? Kind of goes along the lines of the same thing here. You know, buy now, pay later, right? Well, it's, it's not having a good time as well. And this uh, afternoon was ARM. Uh, ARM, considering how great their last quarter was and the last quarter going back to, what was it, February? right? That went from literally 72 to one to what, 160? Well, not having a great time this uh, this afternoon, down 98 points, uh, 98 points, down to $98. Uh, and the question is, well, how can how could a business or how could the market react so aggressively one quarter and so aggressively bad, you know, the other quarter? Well, the, the only answer to that is welcome to Wall Street, right? Welcome to trading. There's no rhyme or reason uh, why anything happens. But the, the most important part going into tomorrow's session is to see how these stocks, especially the, the semiconductors, how are they going to, you know, respond to this arm quarter? Uh, you know, I, when I looked at, for example, at NVIDIA, I was like, wow, oh my God, don't tell me NVIDIA is going to get hit. It's having such a great digestion channel. And I look up, you know, NVIDIA is only down four bucks after the close, which is absolutely nothing. And you can see how many times it held the bottom of the range here. Uh, they continue to pour in, guys, the 930 the 950 weeklies, uh, we saw shorter shorter price uh, price points, the 920s, but they were coming for the 920s, high six figures, low seven figure bets today. And I, you know, I kind of said it yesterday, and I can, I'm, I'm kind of going to re reiterate the point today. I, I think if if Nvidia could survive tomorrow, right? If they could literally survive tomorrow, I, I do think it's going to wake up by Friday. I do. It's just I love the way it's consolidating. Uh, it's now holding its five day moving average back to back days. Uh, higher lows and higher highs uh, on the five day, which is very, very important. And now the question is, can it run? And here's a stock, you know, here's a stock that's near and dear to my heart, Tesla, right? And we've been talking about, you know, we talked about it last night's video, if they start attacking the bottom of the range here, 
you know, it's going to be an aggr a really aggressive short. The problem is I woke up this morning. This was my number one watch for the day. I woke up this morning, you know, my, my game plan was to short it below 176. That was the lowest uh, support in this formation. And when I woke up this morning, it was like 176.50. So I was like, all right, cool. This is, you know, we're going to get a nice trade here. And then I look up here, you had news coming out, uh, basically saying that U.S. prosecutors are examining whether Tesla committed securities fraud. You don't want to hear the word fraud, unless you're already short. Securities fraud and criminal probe of self-driving claims from three sources. God knows what these three sources are, but they're there, three of them. Anyway, make a long story short, Tesla, obviously, the trade was just dead. Uh, stock went all the way down to 170. Obviously, I didn't have a chance uh, to trade it, uh, at least on the natural pivot. Uh, we did get a couple of rejections on Tesla that you know, came in, you know, came in okay, but all the meat and potatoes of the move was already got. But the bigger story on Tesla is now it's just holding on to the 50-day moving average, right? It's holding on to the 50-day and just like the opposite of Netflix, if you guys remember last night, we talked about Netflix, right? Reclaiming the 50-day. And Netflix had a really nice day today. Traded all the way up to uh, 618. We talked about on last night's video the importance of the 50-day. Well, now we got to watch Tesla the next couple of days. It held the 50-day today. But what happens the next couple of days if it, you know, if, if the bears confirm it down? Well, you know, we can have some technical damage uh, start coming into to play. Uh, other names, you know, other names that uh, look pretty good uh, as well. Uh, Meta, you got to give Meta a lot of credit. It didn't respond well to its earnings, even though despite them having pretty good earnings. And this just kind of grinding up, grinding up, grinding up. It's now up against uh, the 20-day supply. Let's see if it can get above the 20-day supply uh, for tomorrow's session. Again, considering uh, how weak uh, the, the NASDAQ should be at least in the morning. Let's see if the bulls come back. Uh, and still uh, buy the dip. Um, you have names, for example, let me give you guys some some other names uh, for tomorrow. You have some other names that actually look decent. They really do. Remember iRobot, right? I think they make, what do they make? Those Rumbas? This is an awful, awful company. It really is. It really is an awful company. But, you know, every every dog, it deserves a warm piece of the sidewalk. Lefty Nogerio, right? Donnie Brasco? So keep an eye on this thing tomorrow. If it can start building above today's channel, this thing might actually wake up. Keep an eye on this thing as well. Uh, stock like VRT. Uh, VRT is having an, an absolutely phenomenal move. It's not really one of those names that jumps at you and not a lot of people follow. This stock has been incredible. Look look at the weekly chart on this thing. I mean, this is an, I mean, an incredible chart. They were coming for the July hundreds. Uh, something to keep an eye on in the next couple of days. Really nice looking uh, chart there as well. Uh, PRGO, I, I believe they came out with crappy earnings yesterday. Guys, watch the bottom of the range here. It's not really a name that I watch a lot, but when you have an engulfing candle that basically takes out about two months worth of buying, if this thing confirms yesterday's channel, this thing has uh, room to go down. And uh, honestly, look, look at Dash. Uh, DoorDash that my son uses religiously uh, spends about $30 for an $8 sandwich with their delivery fees. God bless. Uh, point is, if they start losing the earnings lows, uh, this thing can get hit as well. Other names that continue to, you know, just digest. Uh, you got a good digestion channel on Google, uh, you know, riding the five day after a big, beautiful move. Uh, Amazon today, uh, you know, retraced back to the five day in hell. That's exactly what you want to see uh, in a bullish tape. So that looks good. Uh, Microsoft, again, is just, just can't quite get over the 50 day moving average. But it's something we definitely want to keep atten pay attention to because it keeps on holding uh, this rising five-day support. Again, as long as stocks are sitting above the rising support, there's nothing worth to concern compared to Tesla that's very, very close to losing the bottom of the range, which I'm obviously going to be uh, a very, very eager um, uh, watcher of that bottom channel uh, for the next couple of days. So going into tomorrow, guys, the key for the bulls, you know, stay above the 50-day, right? Stay above the 50-day. If we do get a gap down into the 50-day, I want to be a buyer. I do believe they will uh, They will defend it the first time around. Uh, obviously, when you get a retrace after a breakout, that's the highest probability of a bounce. So if we do get a back test tomorrow, uh, especially at the open on the 50-day moving average on the queues, I want to be a buyer uh, off the 50 and see if it could go uh, right at the green. Uh, obviously, I want to continue to watch NVIDIA. 
Uh, you know, so far it's not horrible compared to uh, arms or earnings uh, after the close. If this thing continues to shine, uh, again, as you can see here, it's put in three days in a row of lower highs, but not lower lows. Today's low was higher than yesterday's low. If you could put in one more day of higher lows, I think by Friday it should start waking up and see the top of the range. So it's a pretty big day uh, for the bulls tomorrow to defend price action. Again, uh, semiconductors were the major uh, driving engine of the bull market going up. So if you start seeing components start taking you down, uh, it could be a problem. So we, we're going to see what happens uh, with ARM tomorrow if it really takes down the whole group. Or are these stocks going to be so self-sufficient, standing on their own two feet, that they're going to shut off the bad news and start moving back higher? Guys, have a great night, everybody. Sorry to uh, cut this broadcast a little short, but I got an AAU practice. I got to get my uh, daughter to. Guys, God bless everybody. I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.